Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. I'm gonna jump right into the video. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that you guys comment, like, and subscribe, and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And give me any video suggestions that you want me to talk about, and I'll get to it, and I'll discuss it with you guys in the comments down below. But aside from that, let's jump into this video. I'm Emmanuel and this is League Talk and today I wanted to talk about the New York Knicks and actually this is the second time I've made a video about the New York Knicks this season and with good reason. The New York Knicks are back. I can safely say the New York Knicks are looking like a competent, good team and everybody's loving it. For all the newcomers, uh, I made a video at the beginning of the season titled are the New York Knicks good? This is when the season had just started, so we didn't really have a good gauge to see if they're good. And now that the playoffs is about a month away, we have substantial evidence and a good sample size to finally answer that question. And I think the answer is yes, the New York Knicks are good. And like I said in the previous video, it's finally good to see the New York Knicks good. Um, I'm, a, I'm a young fan and for the majority of my life, the New York Knicks have been atrocious, terrible, and that's good for nobody. That's that's really no that's not good for the game of basketball. That's no good for the city of New York. That's good for that's not good for the NBA. When the biggest team in the biggest market is not good, your league is going to suffer. And so, with the New York Knicks finally being back and finally being good again, everything's starting to look up, and it looks good, and I like it. I'm, even though I'm not a Knicks fan, I want to see this franchise be good because their fans have had nothing to cheer for for like the past 20 years. And it finally seems like this team is, this team, this 2021 the New York Knicks team is finally the team that's gonna take the Knicks back to being good. And of course, at the center of it all is our man Julius Randle. Julius Randle has been on a tear. He is the reason the Knicks are this good. He has reinvigorated and reinvented himself in New York. He had played for, I think, two other teams. He played for the Lakers, right? Wasn't good out there. They traded him to the Knicks. And I saw a tweet last night of him being appreciative of the organization because he said that they revived him and they gave his, his career a new beginning. And I think that's true. I think the Knicks and Julius Randle are a perfect marriage. He's been able to lead his team to a staggering 33 and 27 record. As I speak right now, the New York Knicks are number four in the Eastern Conference. And that alone is so funny to say because I can't remember. The last time the Knicks were good was in 2013. And you can tell it's a sign of the times when the New York Knicks are good. And I saw a few fans, a few Knicks fans actually, celebrating on social media as if the Knicks had just won a championship. And this came after news of the Knicks being on an eight game winning streak. If you guys don't know, as I'm making this video right now, the Knicks are on a eight game winning streak. They're fourth in the Eastern Conference and they are poised to play the Toronto Raptors today. And I'm projecting that they're probably going to win that game. And as they keep winning, the bandwagon is going to start getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? The people are going to start noticing them more and more and more. And like I said, at the center of it is Julius Randle. And Julius Randle and Julius Sanders are starting to show not only had he, not only, not only should he have been a all-star this season, but he is a perennial all-star. He's going to be an all-star for many years to come in the future. Um, and even if the Knicks don't, become good and even if he sometimes if he doesn't perform as well as he's doing right now his next contract is going to be huge he's going to get his money he's going to get his money's worth and that's good for him i guess you know and he's tearing it up this year on a double double he's averaging 23 points and 10 and a half rebounds for the season what more could you ask you know he, he's leading this young core he's leading this team you know he's doing everything you could ask him to be you know he's literally the center of the team literally <laughs> And behind him is RJ Barrett, the Canadian, the former number two pick in the NBA draft. And he's finally starting to come into his own, right? Because remember, he was, when he when he came into the league, him and Zion Williamson were number one and number two. He played with Zion at Duke, and Zion always overshadowed him. Zion, his stardom always overshadowed him, but that doesn't mean RJ wasn't a star. RJ 
was a star. A RJ was a good scorer. A good, good scorer. He was one of the best scorers for Duke when he played with Zion. And and like I made those videos about Zion, Zion was starting to come into his own too. And he's starting to tear up, he's starting to tear up the league and he's starting to really show people that he can be the star that people think he is. But on the other on the other end, RJ is starting to come into his own too. And I think this is the year, this is the last year for RJ before he breaks out. I think after this year, next year, eyes are gonna be on him and he's really gonna blossom. I think he can be the primary ball scorer for the New York Knicks. Julius Randle is good right now, but the, in the future, I can definitely see RJ being the perennial star, all-star, superstar, and primary scorer for the New York Knicks. And he, you know, right now, he's averaging like 17 points in his sophomore season. He's averaging like 17 points in his sophomore season. I'm, I'm super happy for him, you know? As a fellow Canadian, I'm super happy for him. But uh, yeah, he, he is a big part of why this Knicks team is really good too. And also another part of why this Knicks team is really good is um, Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose, a good veteran, come in there, lead these young players, because there's a bunch of young players on that New York Knicks team. I remember when I'm making the past video, I think I found that the New York Knicks were actually the youngest team in all of the NBA. So they're pretty young and to have a guy like Derrick Rose be a vet and be able to give you 13 points, but also be able to lead the rookies and hold them accountable and show them the ropes. I think this is why you're seeing the Knicks start to become really successful right now. And I hope this continues. And also for Derrick Rose too, this has become a second home for him. You know, like he had his most success in um, in Chicago when he won the MVP. But New York, he he is finding success in New York that may overshadow his time in in Chicago, right? Because remember, he got traded to New York, left, went to the Cleveland Cavaliers, went to Minnesota, went. I think he played for the Suns for a time there, and now he's back in New York, and now. This, I think, is gonna be his long-term home. I think this is the, the, the long-term home for him. And as a player that has had a tragic story in the league, it's good to see him uh, win. It's good for everyone to see Derrick Rose be the player, you know, even if he's not the player that he was going to be, but be a fraction of the players that he was. It brings a smile to my face. I think it brings a smile to any NBA fan's face, and it's good to see him. Now, the question I wanna ask is, the Knicks are number four in the Eastern Conference, right? But you want to ask me, what are their chances of making it in the, in the playoffs? And, you know, I don't want to be a prisoner of the time. You know, I don't want to be a prisoner of the time. The Knicks are good right now, but as I see it right now, they are not. They don't have what it takes to actually compete for the title. They don't actually don't have the talent to compete for the title. Not yet. Not yet. Listen, hear me out right now, right? So in the Eastern Conference, we have teams like Milwaukee, we have teams like uh, the 76ers, and obviously the Brooklyn Nets, and even Miami is good, and also Boston can become really good too. But So right now, the Knicks are good, but they are not gonna go deep into the playoffs. I can see them making, I can see them having a good series in the first round, but and then getting bounced out, but that's good to ask, you know? That's good, to, that's a lot to ask, and that's a lot to deliver for a franchise who hasn't been to the playoffs since 2013, when, when Carmelo Anthony still played for their team. So that still will be a huge success for the New York Knicks. If they can make it to the playoffs and lose in a first round, as long as they put up a good fight, that's a major success. And then the interesting, the fun part comes in the off season. Who are they going to go out and get, right? To try and pair up with their team to get them, you know, to start be, to be a contender, right? Because for a long time, right, free agents in free agency have avoided New York, both because of the management and the owner, James Dolan. But I think with the newly found success of the New York Knicks, right? that's gonna attract other free agency. They're gonna be like, hey, they're winning and they need another star. And they don't have some superstar like a KD or James Harden that can overshadow me. Hmm, why don't I go play over there? I think that can really bring in new talent and new free agents. And that's what's gonna take them to the next level. That's when after they get new stars, new superstars on their team, um, the 
following season, we're gonna see them take it to a new level. RJ Barrett's gonna start coming into his own. Julius Randle's already playing at a high level, and they get another star. That's when you see them actually become a contender. So that's when you see, that's when you're gonna start seeing them make the sports talk shows, and that's when people are gonna start taking them seriously. I don't take them. It's not that I'm not taking them seriously right now. Just this year is not their year. And and those are just my thoughts on uh, on the New York Knicks. I know Stephen A. Smith is going bonkers. The fans in New York are going crazy. They've had something to, to they 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 have something to cheer for. Like Brooklyn is in New York, but it's like Brooklyn, you know. New York represents all of New York. Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, all of that. And people are happy in New York to you know to finally see their team winning. And those are just my thoughts on the New York Knicks. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. Are you happy to see the Knicks finally good? Do you not care? Do you think they are going to go deep in the playoffs? Do you think this year's their year or next year's their year? Let me know in the comments down below. And let me know if you have any suggestions on any videos you want me to do, I'll get to them. But aside from that, see you guys in the next video.